Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel <coughs> and Baruch Abba Bashem Yahuwah and um, today we are going to do another in-depth study series and this I do first an introduction part and then uh, the coming days I will do uh, the following parts I think it's 16 so 16 <coughs> Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, will be some parts. So uh, it is called this new in-depth study is sit, walk, and stand. The process of a believer's maturity. <coughs> And here we do first the introduction. If the life of a believer is to be pleasing the Most High Yahuwah, it must be properly adjusted to Him in all things. Too often we please the emphasis in our own lives upon the application of this principle to some single detail of our behavior or of our work for him. Often we fail therefore to appreciate either the extent of the adjustment called for or at times even the point from which it should begin. But Yahuwah the Most High measures everything from start to finish by the perfections of his Son. Scripture clearly affirms that it is Yahuwah's good pleasure to sum up all things in Mashiach Yahusha, in whom also we were made a heritage. This is stated in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. It is my earnest prayer that in the discussion that follows, our eyes may be opened afresh to see that it is only by placing our entire emphasis there that we can hope to realize the divine purpose for us, which is that we should be unto the praise of His glory. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12. We shall take as a background to our thoughts the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. Like so many of the Apostles' letters, this epistle falls naturally into two sections, a doctrinal and a practical. The doctrinal section is Ephesians verse 1, 2, 3, or I think uh, chapter 1 to chapter 3, um, is concerned mainly with the great facts of the redemption which Yahuwah, the Most High, has wrought for us in Mashiach Yahusha. The practical section, Ephesians chapter 4 to 6, then goes on to present us with the demands in terms of um, a believer's conduct and zeal that Yahuwah is making upon us in the light of that redemption. The two halves are closely related, but it will be seen that the emphasis in each is different. <clears throat> then further, the second and more obvious, obviously, Practical half of the letter may again conveniently be subdivided according to its subject matter into a first long section from verses um, chapter 4 verse uh, 1 to chapter 6 verse 9 
and a second much shorter section from verse 6 or from um, verse 6 to 10 to the end but I think it said here chapter 6 verse 10 till the end the first part deals with our life in the midst of the world the second with our conflict with Hashatan, for many known as Satan or the devil thus we have in all three subdivisions of the epistle to the Ephesians setting forth the believers position in Mashiach Yahusha chapter 1 verse 1 and chapter 3 verse 21 his life in the world chapter 4 verse 1 and chapter 6 verse 9 and his attitude to the enemy chapter 6 verse 10 to 24 we may summarize as follows so Ephesians part a doctrinal chapters is chapter 1 to 3 1 our position in Mashiach Yahusha this is explained in chapter 1 verse 1 and in chapter 3 verse 21 then the practical side is being discussed in chapters 4 to 6 to our life in the world which is chapter 4 verse 1 and chapter 6 verse 9 and our attitude to the enemy chapter 6 verse 10 to 24 of all Paul's epistles it is in Ephesians that we find the highest spiritual truths concerning the believer's life the letter abounds with spiritual riches and yet at the same time it is intensely practical the first half of the letter reveals our life in Mashiach Yahusha to be one of union with him in the highest heavens the second half shows us in very practical terms how such a heavenly life is to be lived by us down here on the earth we do not here propose to study the letter in detail we shall however touch on a few principles lying at its heart for this purpose we shall select one keyword in each of the above three sections to express what we believe to be its central or governing idea in the first section of the letter we note the word sit chapter 2 verse 6 which is the key to that section and secret of a true believers experience Yahuwah has made us to sit with Mashiach Yahusha in the heavenly places and every believer must begin his spiritual life from that place of rest in the second part we select the word walk chapter 4 verse 1 as expressive of our life in the world which is its subject we are challenged there to display in our walk as a believer conduct that it is in keeping with our high calling and finally in the third part we find the key to our attitude toward the enemy contained in the word stand this is to be found in chapter 6 verse 11 expressive of our place of triumph at the end thus we have keywords in Ephesians one our position in Mashiach Yahusha that is sit two our life in the world 
that is walk, and three, our attitude to the enemy, that is stand. The life of the believer always presents these three aspects to the Most High Yahuwah, to man and to the satanic powers. To be useful in Yahuwah's hand, a man must be properly adjusted with respect to all three. His position, his life, and his warfare. He falls short of Yahuwah's requirements. If he underestimates the importance of any one of them, for each is a sphere in which Yahuwah would express the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Chapter 1, verse 6 of Ephesians. We will take then these three words, sit, walk, stand, as guides to the teaching of the epistle and as the text for its present message to our hearts. We shall find it most instructive to note both the order and the connection in which they come. And with this said, I have come to the end of the introduction of this very interesting study, <clears throat> in-depth study, that we uh, will go through. Um, sit, walk, stand. So it is all about Ephesians, and I would recommend you to um, read the book of Ephesians again with this in your mind but as I say we will continue there are I think at least six or seven parts of this uh, study and uh, the next time I will start with part one called sit so thank you so much for uh, hearing this uh, video, these, these words, this message, and the introduction to a new in-depth study series. I wish you all a Baruch day, and uh, do not forget to praise the Most High Yahuwah in all the things you do. And I say to you, Baruch HaBab Hashem Yahuwah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. See you next time.